waste colonialism. It is big corporations making consumers pay for their plastic waste. Waste colonialism is not just about rich countries shipping their trash to poorer nations in the guise of recyclable waste. It is also about multinational companies using single-use plastics for packaging their products, leaving consumers in the developing world to bear the cost of managing their waste. In 2019, Canada, Australia, Hong Kong and South Korea came under fire for their shipment of tons of illegal waste to the Philippines with unrecyclable and contaminated plastic waste, which goes against the Basel Convention, an international treaty that regulates the transboundary movements of hazardous wastes and other wastes and obliges the developed world to ensure that such wastes are managed and disposed of properly. Waste colonialism is manifested when companies continue to use single-use products in their packaging, a decision that comes from boardrooms in global north countries and corporations with no consideration for how these products and packaging would impact the markets where they would be sold. Waste colonialism is also when emerging economies in Asia are blamed for the world's plastic pollution, said Colleen Salamat, plastic solutions campaigner at EcoWaste Coalition. Last year, United States-based environmental advocacy Ocean Conservancy apologized for its 2015 study that pointed to China, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam as the main culprits of global plastic pollution. The research overlooked the role of industrialized territories such as Europe, Japan, and the United States, in plastic overproduction and waste exports to developing countries. Salamat cited a 2021 report that found how the 15 largest plastic manufacturers are based in Germany, Japan, Saudi Arabia, the United Kingdom and the US. People are not the problem, these corporate polluters are. Consumer giants Coca-Cola, Nestle, PepsiCo, Procter & Gamble, and Unilever have consistently ranked as the world's biggest plastic polluters, according to annual surveys of plastic debris found on city streets, parks, forests, beaches, and coastal areas around the world in the past five years. A 2019 study found the same multinationals to make up the 10 companies responsible for 60% of residual waste in the Philippines. Environmentalists called on corporates to stop ignoring solutions from grassroots communities such as the refill and reuse system, where consumers purchase kitchen condiments, laundry products, and other household items by bringing clean and reusable bottles or containers to Sari Sari stores or Philippine versions of convenience shops. Plastic producers have said that single-use plastics cannot be cut from packaging because plastic substitutes are not yet available, and alternative environmental packaging is expensive. In a matter of decades, the refill culture was replaced by a culture of convenience dominated by fast-moving consumer goods packed in non-recyclable sachets. But the refill system is increasingly making a comeback in the Philippines. These are not new concepts. We grew up bringing our own containers to Sari Sari stores to refill cooking oil and other condiments. It is already embedded in our culture. If it works in Sakihar, it could work in Metro Manila and the whole country.